And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach unto the preaching that I bid thee. Well, that city was a very huge city, and it had more than 500,000 people in it. And Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days' journey. And Jonah, in other words, to, to go all the way around that city. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. You see, the Lord sent him in there to preach repentance. I'm going to stop here, and then I'll finish it. Uh, we've been coming to you from Doers of the Word Baptist Church at 14780 West Berry <coughs> Road, Newberry, Ohio. You've been listening to us this morning on the Liberty Works Radio Network. That's 104.3 FM, the Eagle in Tampa and Ocala. And until next week, we want to say good morning. God bless. And remember, always, always keep fighting the fights. They got it done. Okay. I want to pick it up where we left off here. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, when he arose from his throne, he laid his robe from him and covered him. Well, no, let me go back to verse 4. Jonah was supposed to be going in to, to, to preach repentance. But because of the way that the Ninevites, the way that they had been so cruel to the Israelites when they had captured them, they would, in those days, they would actually skin the men alive and hang their, their skins from their tests. They were some very, very evil people. Uh, <coughs> today, it's kind of like ISIS out there. Mm. All right? Yeah. And so, so here, Jonah did not want to go back to Israel and say, I was the one, I was the one, and I preached repentance, and they repented! And of course, that's not what the Israelis would have wanted to hear. No. They would have wanted to hear their, their enemies being destroyed. Mm -hmm. So instead of going in there preaching repentance, he went in there preaching judgment. Forty days, he says. And cried, saying, In forty days, and then there shall be overthrown. In other words, forty days, this place will be a parking lot. God's going to destroy it. You're going to get what's coming your way. Okay? Mm -hmm. But, and then it says, For the word came unto the king, Nineveh, and he arose from his throne. What? Verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on the sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Let me, listen, let me say that again. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Amen. And you know what? That gave them a hundred, that bought them 150 years. All of those people God. were gone by the time God brought his judgment upon Nineveh. Mm -hmm. yeah. The word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him, and covered himself with sackcloth, and set in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh, the decree of the king and his noble saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let him not feed nor drink water. But let man and the beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let him every one turn from his evil way, and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? And turn away from his fierce anger, and that we perish not. And God saw their work, and they turned their, from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said, and he would do unto them, and he did it not. America, folks, America has time. America will repent. But it's got to be real. You see, repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry. No. The word repent is a military term. It means to about face. Mm -hmm. It means to go in the other direction. It means to undo what you've done. Right. Remember, from Genesis to Revelation, the one thing God demands more than anything else is obedience. Amen. And that's the reality. And with that, I'm going to close. And today, we take the Lord's table. So... Let us take. Well, first we'll take an offering, then we'll take the Lord's name. So, let us take an offering. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we gather here before you, Lord, in all things we know, Father, that you 
you have, again, those expectations of us. And we're living at a time, and Lord, oh, I, I praise I praise the Lord for the preachers you have raised up across this country more and more now that are preaching boldly, preaching boldly, and telling people, and trying to warn people. And Lord, I wish there was a way that we could just pump it into their, their hearts and their minds. But, but it is, I guess, your word. But Father God, in every way, you have expectations of us. The Lord, we are to come. There are many that will come and, and they don't sing. You told us to sing praises. Sing praises! And others will say, well, I can't sing. No. Lord, my prayer is put it on their heart that they're supposed to be obedient. Even if they, they can't sing, to make it a joyful noise, even if it's not a pleasant one. Lord, there are those that come that are supposed to praise you. Give words of, 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 of praise. Right. And they, they sit silent. Lord, whatever it takes, Father God, to let them stand up and, and give you praise and honor. There are those that come to worship you and just sit still. And Lord, when it comes to tithing, I remember people that used to attend this church that would always leave just before we would take up an offering. They, they would leave it, not knowing that they were only robbing themselves. That they were only robbing themselves. Not knowing that you don't need their money. But it's their faith. That you want them to step out in faith. That's right. We know that you have no shortage. And the idea that, well, I have a gas bill or I have an electric bill or some bill. And I, I can't give. Not having the faith. That faith takes away what they had. And Lord... And all of these things that we mentioned here today, Lord, let nobody here fall victim to any of that. But let them stand up and boldly proclaim their faith in everything, in praise and worship and song and tithing, and most of all in service. Mm -hmm. And most of all in service. These things we ask as we take an offering. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <clears throat> While they're taking an offering, I'm going to ask a blessing over the food now while everybody's here. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we just thank you for Baptist women. Lord, they, uh, they're some of the best cooks we ever saw. And of course, we thank you, Lord, for more than being just good cooks. The Lord, we just thank you, and Lord, as, as we come here today and we're about to have that meal, let us not ever, ever, ever forget that there are many people in this world that live their entire life without ever having clean food, you know, without ever having clean water to drink, without ever having shoes on their feet. We've seen people that would, would die for just owning a few pages of the Bible. And today here in America they sit on shows and gather dust. But as we gather here and all these blessings we have, let us not, not for one second think that we have all of these blessings. <coughs> Let us realize, Father, it's by thy grace. And as we have been blessed in these ways, Lord, we have the responsibility to be a blessing in the same manner to those that are without. Yeah. These things, let us remember. We thank you for the bounty you've set before us and the hands that have prepared it. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we'll now take the Lord's table. Why these old timers move slow, though? <laughs> 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 At least they're still moving. That's the deal. Fred, you move too fast. Remember, take in the Lord's table. The first thing you need to remember is you must be saved. You must be saved. And number two, 
must be baptized by immersion. And number three, and this is the most important, the most important. If you heed the warnings given to you in the Word of God, you must not have any unconfessed sin. Right. You must not have any unconfessed sin. So let us start. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and, and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. given thanks. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, as we come before you this day, Lord, we want to thank you for the gift, that, the greatest gift that anyone could ever receive. We yeah. thank you, Lord Jesus, you hung up in our place upon that cross, a substitutionary death for sinners, and yet you loved us while we were yet in our sin. Lord, we ask each and every one of us here, Lord, that you would forgive us whatever sins we've committed, that we not come before this table. The Lord spotted, but let us come without spot or blemish and, and clean. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take heed. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup
And when he had supped, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty for the body and the blood of the Lord. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Sheila, do you ladies need time to get set up down there? 15 more minutes. 15 more minutes. Oh, don't you talk all you want. Thank you. Thank you. All the ladies that need to, to assist downstairs can be excused. Others sit still and don't move. I'm watching. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, you're not a lady. He's a lady's helper. <laughs> I got a feeling that those two want to watch the Cleveland Pittsburgh game. Are they masochists? Yeah, that's painful. Yeah. Very painful. Yeah. I'm a Steelers fan. You are? Yep. Well, well, God will forgive you. Yeah. God can forgive you of that. There's still time to repent. Well, you know what? <laughs> you ought to go out, out back and talk to this, some of them others. Steelers fans, they're laying out there and they got kind of bruised up. Anytime. Let's have some words of praise, folks. We all we all have to have words of praise. Amen. 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 Yes. Finally, Captain Leary's resolution by the Lord's grace. Read through the whole Bible this past year, and Lord's will, we'll do it again this year. Well, praise the good Lord for that. Oh, Amen. There's no better reading that ever existed than the Word of God. Amen. What other words of praise can we have? Yeah, Doug. Um, and just to let you know, uh, I thank God for, um, you know, uh, I'm about to, you, you know, I got my, um, you know, uh, YouTube channel set up, so it's going to be, uh, um, like different topics, but first and foremost, it's going to be uh, about the Bible, and I'm going to expose everything, including, you, you know, like from um, A to Z, like, um, when it comes to current events. All right, go for it. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, who, who else has some words of praise? Okay. Wait a minute. Everybody here has words of praise. How many people here don't have the flu? Y'all have praise something. God. Like, yeah. 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 Martha. Well, I just have to praise God for the miracle that happened for us this year with um, Vicks finding this brain tumor last January. And, uh, it's just a miracle, the, the prayer of everyone in the church and all of our friends and family is the only thing that has brought him through, and he is back 100% more or less, except for a few memory problems, which you get when you get old anyway, so, you know, it's, I just see it as a miracle. God used it as a teaching time for me and for him both, and I just praise God for bringing us through that. He's with us in the valleys. He's with us on the mountain. You Amen. certainly had a lot of people holding you up in prayer. Oh, Praise yes. So we yeah. felt it. We knew it. Amen. Yeah. And, uh, and we want to praise the good Lord that Grandma Blackson is as sharp as she is at her age today. Yes. That is something. Yeah, I don't know where, where Brother Joe is. He hasn't been with us the last couple of days. I know he did get, was, was able to go back to work at least for a little while. <coughs> um, coupon's still alive, I think. Yeah, I'm still working at it. <laughs> One day at a time. I thank the Lord for each day and every day. Amen. He's still got two legs. They was going to cut one of them off, but they, now they decided it was too big a job. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> he decided he'd lose weight another way. Yeah, I was going to fight him the whole time. <laughs> Grandma, you had a word of praise? Yeah, 
Yes, I had a chance to witness to my grandson and his lady friend at a restaurant the other day, and much to my surprise, this woman has had two, for sure, husbands, possibly three. Now she's going with my grandson, so this was a steep journey the other day, but the message did get through. Well, praise the good Lord for that. Called the Great Commission. We're all to practice that, aren't we? Yeah. Amen. Who, who else has words of praise? Yes, please. You know, uh, my sister, she bought a, uh, one of those machines that makes colloidal silver, mm -hmm. and we've been taking it. And so far, I've avoided colds. I was around uh, Charlie and his brood last week, and they all had colds. And my mom, you better not come home with a cold. I didn't. The praise of the good Lord. Yeah, colloidal silver is very good. It's, it's one of, of many, but there's a lot of good natural herbs out there. Yeah. And, uh, yes. I want to praise the good Lord that more and more people are going away from the, the chemo and going to natural herbs. Amen. And uh, Mary Stouffer has, uh, it's over her cancer. Remember, she had cancer of the, uh, the pancreas and of the liver, <coughs> and it has uh, gone down over 40%. Praise so, God. But that just reminds me, uh, some of you probably um, might remember Gary Wilson that uh, used to come to our church here. Gary and Dan Diane, they used to attend when we were across the street over there. Uh, they would always sit as you faced the, the pews on the right side, second pew. Diane was a blonde-headed woman. Gary was kind of a reddish, kind of a reddish-brown they came, well, anyhow, they had to move to Pennsylvania because of family problems. And he called me and he asked if we would pray for him because he has got cancer of the liver. Mm. But it's inoperable because you have the arteries that run through your liver to bring your blood through there. Mm. Uh, this, this cancer is surrounding them. Mm. And so they can't cut it out without killing him. So he asked us to pray for him. And I, I told him he really needs to call Wendy Wilson and start getting on some of those, those cancer-fighting uh, herbal medicines. But let's pray. Let's join me in prayer for him. Lord, we want to just hold up Gary and Diane. Father God, he called it. Lord, he's so afraid to die because his, his sons are unsaved and his, all of his family would, are left there. And he doesn't want to die and leave his wife alone with all of the unsaved people. So, Lord, I just want to hold him up and ask, Father God, that you might touch him. He might receive a healing. The Lord and his sons might receive salvation. Yes. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 What other prayer requests do we have? I was, I was able to find the way up here today. <laughs> wow, Kathy was able to find her way here today. All right. That's very good. good. Now, do you think you can make it home? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no, no. This is going to be interesting, but I've still got gas in the tank. <laughs> so. Very good. All right. You know, you know, Grammy Mark Mullen, she was one of those that had a problem with it. North and the south and the east and the west. And, uh, she would have a tendency to get lost. Folks, you, Grandma Mars one time, Buell and the other grandma, one day she was over to our house and it had, it was winter time and the driveway was nothing but a sheet of ice. And uh, this time she had that big Buick she was driving. And she put it in gear and she was looking out to back, back out the driveway except for she didn't have it reversed, she had it reversed. <coughs> And I'm standing in front of the, the car, and guess what? She, she pinned me right up against the garage wall. Now, luckily, it was a sheet of ice. If it hadn't have been a sheet of ice, I'd have been crushed. But because the car was just spinning on ice, I was a actually able to, to hold it back. And, and I, I told her, I said, Marge, I said, Any, anytime you want to change gears, I'd appreciate it. Because she had me pinned right up against that wall. Wow. wow. <laughs> and she, uh, we had a, another thing I'll tell you this too was funny because we had, that was a bad, real bad winter that year and I got a brand new snowblower and this thing would, would blow snow high, you know, away. And so when we went by the trees and it was on the one side of the house, it blew snow up about 10 feet high. 
Well, that was the year we had a lot of snow. We had a record snow in Novel Dip, 32 inches overnight. And uh, so when she came out there, she says, wow, I said, she had a lot of snow. I said, oh, but nothing like it used to be. It was. I said, she says, it was more than this. I said, well, you can see up on the trees. She looked up there was the mark of that feet. Snowblower had blown. She said, oh, my gosh, you did have a lot. <laughs> Anybody else have a word? Yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> I would say uh, last night the Lord saved my life. Well, that's that's, that's a good word for uh, Yeah. <laughs> it's a long story, but the long and short of it is I was uh, cold weather camping. Uh, my tent was next to a, a creek bed. I had a five foot drop. I had to get up in the middle of the night to adjust the tent stake. And you know, when you're working on the ground, you kind of forget where you are. And I stepped right into the creek fell down. I don't know how this happened, but I spun like a top, landed on my feet, and continued spinning until I had no more momentum. So, I mean, in this crook had uh, boulders, rocks, logs. I could have thought of a hundred ways I could have ended badly. Did, uh, did that icy cold water wake you up in the middle of the night? It was only a trickle. <laughs> I, didn't, I, and I, I don't even think I landed uh, in that either. Oh, so. well. Praise the good Lord for Praise that. Man. Man. Yeah. yeah. Now, you probably think that that was just luck, don't you? Oh, no. No, it was not. <laughs> it was luck. I was praising God right then. Amen. Let me go with John first. Go ahead, John. Oh, I'd just like to praise God and thank Him for the protection He's given me and my students in the job I have, because I've had a lot of close calls, near misses. Yeah, I know teaching 16-year-olds how to drive. That would be exciting. Oh, yeah. Never a dull moment. Yeah. <laughs> With that. Yeah. So praise the good Lord for that. And, yeah. Okay, I want to praise God for the radio program. I learned some things about dementia. My mother is dealing with dementia right now. I got her on lithium orotase and coconut oil. And there's been a complete turnaround. Wow. And it is, it is helping her. It is, I heard about it on your program. You had uh, <coughs> talk about it and a few other people. Call in on it. So we started her on this, and she's got a complete turnaround. I mean, she wasn't able to tell the time before. She now can tell time. She can operate the remote control. She can answer oh, wow. the phone. She wasn't able to do that before. Hallelujah. So, yeah. That coconut oil works very well. The only problem with it is that you can only have a few things you can use it in, like uh, you know, cereal. Hot cereal is a good one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because it coagulates real quick. I mix it with apple juice, and what I do is I put it into a little boiling pot of water, and I soften it up, get it clear, pour it in there, and I said, Mom, this is for you? She says, I know it helps me. I can tell it's helping. Oh, yeah. Because she couldn't speak a sentence without, whatchamacallit, you know what I mean, you know, she couldn't say anything, really. I mean, it was always... Yeah, we that coconut oil really, really works well, but it's got to be the right kind. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Wendy can tell you about that. I, she really knows her stuff. She really does know her natural herbs and things. And I got when I went to the VA hospital when I went in there. I, uh, this, this nurse in there said to me, "I recognize your voice," and I said, "Yeah." She said, "Yeah, you've been on the Wendy Wilson program." <laughs> yeah, actually, I've hosted it for her while she's been gone. All right, let's go. Let's turn it loose. Get down there, and the chow is ready to roll. Uh, <coughs> you got your brother's Bible. Oh,